Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we are going to look at why it's very, very important to invest. And when I say invest, I'm not just talking about stock markets, which is what we do here in this channel, or real estate. In order to build your wealth, in, you will have to invest your money. Investing allows you to put your money in a vehicle that has the potential to earn strong return. Okay, that return is very important. That strong rate of returns is what we're all after. If you don't invest, you are missing out on opportunities to increase your financial worth. Of course, you have to, obviously, you've got the potential to lose money as well. So you have to think about both sides. But one of the things I've realized lately is there's so many people right now that are basically sitting on the side and not investing. And the reasons are because they're worried about what might happen to the stock market, what is, might happen to the real estate, what might what's happening to car, you know, cryptocurrencies and things like that. And that just puts people off. And a lot of it is because of the news and what's happening and they're listening to the noise. So you have to be careful and you have to really think about yourself. So I want to share with you five reasons why everybody should be investing in this video. Because remember, I'm not here just to share my stock you know, analysis and all that stuff. I want to talk about what got me here and what I'm doing and my, you know, if you think about like my goals and things that are important to me, you know, things that are important to me. Because in the end of the day, this portfolio, you know, it's not just for me, it's for my family and the goals that we have as a family. And I want to talk about these things in today's video. So if you like this type of content and you like how transparent I've been with you guys since day one, I hope you can just give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because that really helps the channel. And that's all I ask, okay? So the five reasons why you should start investing today is, okay? The first one we're going to look at today is this, okay? The first thing I want to talk about is this diagram here. This is extract from the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, okay? And one of the things I love about this, and I've talked about this in my channel before, is it has changed my mental abilities. It changed how I look at money. It changed, it changed everything I basically, like things that I used to do, I don't do it anymore because of this diagram here and because of that book. So when you look at the poor side of things, okay, the poor people will get an income, okay? They get a salary, and what do they do? They have expenses. They pay taxes, they pay rent, food, transportation, and clothes because they just want to live by. And that is it. So because that money is not enough, okay, for them to do anything else, that's all they do. So they're renting, they're paying, they're basically getting food, transportation, and clothes. That's all they can do. They have no assets and no liabilities, which in a way is a good thing. No liabilities means a good thing, right? Then you've got the middle class. Okay, and this is where majority of the people that fall into because if you work in and you're getting a good salary, you went to university, whatever, majority of the people will be around here. Okay, so you got an income. Your income is salary. So you receive a salary at the end of each month. What do you use it for? You use it for taxes, mortgage payment. Okay, because you have a decent salary, you get a mortgage, you get car payment, you got credit card, and you've got school loan payment and other things that you might actually need to pay off, right? So you have no assets, you only have one income, and you have a mortgage, you've got a liability is that like mortgage, car loans, credit card, debit cards, and school loans, and so on. All of these things take money out of your pocket. So you're depending on salary. And guess what? If you get fired tonight, your mortgage company will take that um, house back. They will take their car. The credit card company will be chasing you. And it's basically student loans and schools loans, whatever they, they're basically running after you every single week. So you really don't have anything else to fall back to. So what do the rich people do? They have different sources of income. Okay, So they've got rental income. So they own a property and they gain rental income. They have dividends that they receive from their stocks. They have interest and they have royalties. All of these things are assets. So the real estate, the stocks, the bonds, notes, intellectual property, they have all of these assets that give them income. Their expenses are taxes and mortgage payment. They might have a car loan or whatever, but consumer loans and credit cards and mortgage, but they have so much income, assets that generate income, they are able to afford these things. 
they even they like to take more debt because they have real assets and they actually use those assets to pay off those debts and so on. So the difference between us and the rich people is the fact that they have a multiple income. And that is what we need. That's where we need to be because otherwise, what is the point? That's what we should be working. Because remember, if you lose, if you are in the middle class and you only have a salary and you lose your job, then that's it. What are you going to do? All of that basically has to be paid, right? So what are you going to do? The company, the mortgage company will take the mortgage back and so on. But when it comes to the rich, if the dividends stop coming in, they still have a rental income. They still have royalties. They still have the, the bonds and um, intellectual properties and all of those things coming in. So you have to really be careful and you have to strive to actually get to not just be rich, but have at least a list of multiple incomes. And the reason we need to do that, reason number one, is to generate wealth. Okay, Wealth creation is very important. Why? Because you can, if you've got children, you can leave a legacy behind. Okay, Financial legacy for your children. Okay, By building a generational wealth, by actually, cre by buying properties, by actually creating portfolios that generate income. These things you can leave for your children. Okay, and guess what happens? They're not going to basically struggle as much as you have struggled. And that to us, to me anyway, it's very important. That gives them a head start. Okay, that's going to give them, hopefully, my grandchildren will actually benefit from that wealth creation. So it's really important to start with that. The next thing, okay, is the compounding effect. This is important. When you start investing, okay, the compounding effect is one of the major things that we need to focus on. What I mean by that is, I'll show you. Let me just show you this calculator. Right, here's the calculator. So investment calculator here. So let's say, for example, you start a new investment today and you only have $100, right? And every single month, you can only add $500 every single month from your salary, right? The total, the rate of return, of return for example, the S&P 500, basically on average return about 7%. So let's go with that. Just let's go with 7%. Normal stocks slightly sometimes could be better, sometimes could be worse. People like Warren Buffett basically had a return of like, I don't know, 21%, I think it was, every single year. 21% to 1 every single year. So let's say this is, we're only going to do this for 10 years. So your starting position is, let's start with, um, not 10,000, 1,000. Right, so that's our starting, starting position. We only have 1,000 um, pounds or dollars in the bank. We've added 500 every single month. Okay, not annually. We're going to do this monthly. Okay, and we want seven percent return and for ten years. You've got eighty-eight thousand five hundred and fifty-two dollars after ten years. Right. Let's have, break it down. So the first year when you started, this is what you started with, and then you made six thousand dollars in contribution because you paid five hundred every single month. Right. Your interest earned, or the 7% you earned basically, is 269. So that's what you got from the S&P 500 or from your investment, the stocks or whatever it is, right? And then by the end of that year, so you've got $7,269. And then it carries on all the way to 2031, where you have 88552 And this is what the compounding effect is. Okay, every single year because of that interest you're earning, because of that seven percent. Imagine if you're like Warren Buffett and you're actually getting like twenty-one percent on your money every single. You will have almost closer to two hundred thousand. Okay, but that's not normal. That's basically what we're looking at about seven percent. Okay, seven percent is what the S and P five hundred returns. If you can do better than that, that's perfect. And you're only contributing just five hundred. Imagine if you did a thousand every single month. Okay you will have 175,000 175,000 after just 10 years and guess what honestly 10 years is not that long some of you are very young saying there oh 10 years is very long whatever trust me um 10 years is not long my son was just born not long ago and inshallah he will be in 10 years in this september so it does happen it's it it's quick it goes really quick time flies okay so the point i'm trying to make is by starting basically investing, okay, 
you will definitely be better off investing than leaving this money somewhere or when you invest in it actually gives you a goal doesn't it it gives you something to work towards okay the next thing we're looking at is to be inflation right now inflation is about seven eight nine whatever depending on what country you're in right what happens in during inflation is everything goes up so the price of things go up and your money is not worth as much as it was yesterday so it actually um, loses value and for that reason you're leaving your money in the bank for example and you're not going to get really um, even if you are into basically getting interest and all that stuff, it's not good enough. Like the bank interest, I've never had one, but I'm assuming it's like 1%, 2%, whatever. That's not going to be inflation. But if you can get a, if inflation hopefully will come down in the next couple of uh, years. And if it goes back to like 3%, which is the average, right? Then you're getting 7% on the overall stock market. Then you, you are beating inflation. And so that is, again, another important thing because you earn Obviously, your money, okay, is beating inflation. It's not sitting there eat by, uh, you know, eaten by inflation, if you think about. The other thing is you might want to, you know, start investing for retirement. Because remember, if you don't, if you're saving just the money, just because, um, and just put in the in your bank account, for example, by the time you retire, that money will be absolutely worthless. But if you put in into that, so based on what we've seen in that calculator, just imagine if you want to retire in 10 years, and you're going to put a thousand pounds, okay, and you've got 190, 175,000, whatever it was, right? 175,000 is a decent amount of money, okay? It's better than having absolutely nothing or having something that's very small that is not going to even beat inflation. So it really genuinely is important. Some people might actually want to start investing really early so they can retire or they can do what's called um, FIRE, Financial Independent uh, Retire Early, okay? Again, those are goals that you need to work towards. You're thinking about what might, what's going to happen in about 5, 10, 15 years down the line. Only Allah knows whether we're going to be alive or not, but it's important for us to plan. And because when you have a children, you also have due to responsibility, right? So you have to think about that, those things. Okay. And the final thing I want to talk about today is you might want to basically reach your financial goals. So you might want to start investing when you're 17, 18. And a lot of you, to be honest with you, the, one of the reasons I'm doing this now, because is there's so many young people that have actually joined the channel. I checked it the other day, the age groups, they're actually getting younger and younger. So welcome, please. Okay, ask questions. Let us know if you have any worries or whatever. Because the fact that you're here and learning is so important. I wish I knew, okay, this stuff when I was at your age, because I would have started really straight away. You have that opportunity to do that right now. So if your financial goal is, for example, by the time you're 25 to buy your first property, then start investing right now. Okay, I'm going to show you very quickly a couple of um, stocks that you could potentially buy. I'm going to show you brokerage accounts you can actually start on investing on. Okay, so that is really important. So you might want to buy a house. You might want to buy a car. You might want to retire early. You might want to have a you know wedding coming up. <laughs> we, we all know how much and how expensive weddings things like that are. So you really genuinely have to think about your reaching your financial goals. And if your financial goals is to leave a legacy for your children and create generational wealth, okay, start now. What are you waiting for? Especially right now, we're in a situation where the stock market is actually quite down a lot for 20, 30, 34% right now. But obviously, housing is another ball game because this is really there's a bubble going on up there, and I'm sure sooner or later it will come back to earth, and that will be great for all of us. But right now, if you don't have the capital basically to buy a property, then put that money maybe into a um, stock into the stock market and buy a couple of great companies that you know and understand their their businesses and so on. So like I've always said to you, the, basically the account that I use, the brokerage that I use right now, it's two of them really. Um, well, I use three of them right now. Um, trading 212, which is this. By the way, Trading 212 might not be available in the UK right now. They're not taking new customers in the UK, but they are taking new customers around the, Europe. So if you live in the other European countries like Germany, um, I think Norway, Sweden, those kind of countries, you definitely will be able to have access to trading to one to, I think. Just double check, go to their website and just click the country in and just click open account. It will open it straight away. If it's UK, basically they will tell you they don't have it. Okay. And I think, I don't know every country is different, but in the UK, this um, brokerage is actually, you can put up to, I think you protected up to 80,000 or is it 85,000 by the financial authority, basically, um, 
uh, conduct the company. So they will protect your assets in that in terms of that. Um, but yeah, obviously it's a great, it's the easiest to use, it's free. Um, you don't have to pay basically fees and things like that. Um, the other one I use is free trade. Free trade, if you're looking for, if you live in the UK and you want to open an ISA account, you just pay three pounds. And the final one is interactive brokers. Interactive brokers um, is where I have my children's account and do it basically, my wife's got an ISA there. And that ISA account is actually, um, I think we, if you do a couple of trades every single month, it's free. So we plan to do a couple of, basically a um, couple of trades every single month and it becomes a free, I think. It was like $3 for the US. UK is slightly expensive. So all the stocks that we own over there is just US based. So yeah, there are loads of different accounts that you can actually create, especially if you live in the UK and the US is even better. So you've got like companies like um, M1 Finance, which I really like. Um, I love trading to one too, but M1 Finance actually looks a lot more better because one of the things I've realized is you can click like your overall and it will tell you um, how much you're up for that year, for that month or whatever. Whereas this one, you just have to hover over it to actually um, do that. Right, let me just show you very quickly a couple of companies that you could potentially look into. J&J &J is one of those very famous companies out there, been there for a long time over a 400 billion dollar company they pay nice dividend okay they seem to be fairly valued or just a premium at the moment the other companies that you potentially know about is microsoft okay and that's msft microsoft is one of those companies everyone knows about okay we've we've got products obviously we use their products all the time um procter and gamble is the other one okay that you could potentially add to your portfolio uh, or maybe if you're starting investing that's the one of the companies that you might want to look at um, and then Starbucks and companies like that so the reason I'm showing you this is because it's really important to invest especially early days companies whose basically products you know so Procter & Gamble obviously head and shoulders in these kind of products they make it every time you go to the supermarket you'll find their product Starbucks they're everywhere around the world it is very famous Microsoft is the soft the operating systems that we use all the time comes from them, right? J&J, um, &J, the, all the baby stuff that we buy, okay? The new, the new vaccines and all, this, all sorts of things. Um, again, another company that is well known is Home Depot, in the, especially in the US, okay? And home improvement side of things. These companies are great companies that have so much cash and so on. So they're not going to run out of business in the next couple of months, okay? They have been around for a long time. They will be around for a long time. So this is the kind of thing that you should be doing right now and I genuinely if you are scared about investing just to open a brokerage account I'm not financial advisor but I'm just personally this is what I what I've done and what I would do if I were you open a brokerage account put maybe 100 pounds if you got even 20 pounds it doesn't matter whatever it is however it's small right and then start dollar cost and average into companies that you genuinely like right do you research don't follow the hype think about what you're doing think about the Sharia compliance side of things as well right do all of these things and inshallah, Allah will make it easy for you. And in the long run, if you are, especially if you are, say, 17, 18, all the way to 25, bro, trust me, brothers and sisters, you've got a great opportunity to start investing now while you're that age. If I had started 10 years ago, right now, I would have been in a better position. But alhamdulillah, everything happens for a reason. Alhamdulillah, I'm financially happy right now where I am, but I'm still building on this. I Like you've seen me every single month, right? Since I started investing, I've been showing you every single week where there's up, down. And the reason I do that is because I want to share my journey and show you what is possible. I hope you enjoy this kind of content. I hope you like the video. Have a wonderful day. Eid Mubarak to all of you. Assalamu alaikum.